I request permission to go after him. I cannot allow you to do this. Jim, you're not actually going after this guy, are you? Let's go get this son of a bitch. Sir, there's a ship heading right for us. You can't even guarantee the safety of your own crew. Now, shall we begin? I'm sorry. The ship's dead, sir. She's gone. No, she's not. No ship should go down without her captain. I believe in you, Jim. Starring Chris Pine, Zachary Quinto, Zoe Saldana, Badass Cumberbatch, Simon Pegg, and Alice Eve, J.J. Abrams brings us another action-packed sci-fi adventure, Star Trek Into Darkness. This exceedingly satisfying action-packed sequel follows Captain Kirk as he leads a manhunt to capture an unstoppable force of terror within the Enterprise a one-man weapon of mass destruction, whose name I will reveal later in the spoiler section. The aspect that made this sci-fi flick so amazing was the incredible performance by Badass Cumberbatch. He is the first actor since Heath Ledger's Joker whose ruthless and menacing performance as a villain I believe deserves an Oscar nomination. Though I do recognize that, that will probably never happen. His portrayal was so awesome, it's almost as if he alone was destined to play that character all along, specifically at the level of ferocity and intelligence he unleashed upon us. Well, let's play this out logically then, Mr. Spock. Firstly, I will kill your captain to demonstrate my resolve. Then, if yours holds, I will have no choice but to kill you and your entire crew. If you destroy our ship, you will also destroy your own people. Your crew requires oxygen to survive, mine does not. I will target your life support systems located behind the aft nacelle. And after every single person aboard your ship suffocates, I will walk over your cold corpses to recover my people. Now, shall we begin? I will admit, he scared me so much, I figured that to challenge him in a verbal or physical fight is more pointless than fighting Tom Hardy's Bane. Unlike many other great movie villains, this one works alone throughout the movie since his crew are undergoing a state of suspended animation, each locked up inside their own torpedo for protection. You'll hopefully understand that key plot point once you've watched the movie. The action sequences are also fantastic and extremely satisfying. Luckily, they weren't just a bunch of Michael Bay type explosions, and they went superbly with the dazzling visual effects. I had originally thought that the title Into Darkness was pretty cliche and it was only used to grab the attention of the audience. However, it wasn't until a few days ago that I realized how much darker and more violent Star Trek Into Darkness really is, and not a lot of people realize it either. I will talk more about this aspect at the end of this review. Also, I don't know about all of you who've already seen the movie, but I felt like the size of the Enterprise crew suddenly decreased from the last movie. Even so, they seem to be all on board. Scotty, Sulu, Chekhov, Bones, Hura. Wait a minute. Once again, J.J. Abrams didn't let me down as Star Trek Into Darkness fulfilled my expectations so highly that the only other blockbuster I could see overruling it this year is the next Hobbit movie, which, interestingly, Cumberbatch also stars in, 
and even better, plays the main villain in as well. That being said, it is inevitable that I'm going to give it a green light. Now time for spoilers. So if you're, and I understand this is a very sensitive issue, I, I completely understand. If you don't want to hear the movie's relations to 9-11 or the name of the villain, please exit now. As I stated earlier, Star Trek Into Darkness is much darker and more violent than people realize. For example, the villain gives a desperate father a cure that will hopefully save his daughter from dying of cancer. However, the outcome was very unfortunate. A highly advanced Starfleet ship crashes into San Francisco, toppling over buildings and putting millions of lives in extreme danger. Whether it was accidental or intentional, it's just like when the plane crashed into the Twin Towers and therefore reminds me a lot of 9-11. After the end credits though, the movie does reveal its dedication to the post 9-11 veterans and their service. And yes, the villain is Khan. <laughs>